Here we are, Trooper Cody. I remember World War One uniform. World War One uniform, 303. 303 rifle. World War One uniform, but still the weapon that a lot of the Commonwealth forces in the Second World War used. The good old faithful 303. So, World War One uniform, World War Two story, and the story I'm going to tell you is it's about a book. So you've all read or seen All Quiet on the Western Front. Written by a bloke who was actually there. He wrote about World War One, not his true exploits, but he wrote about the horrors of World War One. How well known is that book? So well known that three movies have been made of it. Three separate remakes. 30s, 80s, and again just recently in the 2022. And yet, strangely enough, the book I'm going to tell you about, The Forgotten Soldier, gets nowhere near, nowhere near the recognition, the, the, the commercial recognition that All Quiet on the Western Front gets. Now this book is still in print today. It first came out in 1965 and it was written by a man who went into the German army at the age of 18 with his entire military career on the Eastern Front. He first gets to the Eastern Front when things are starting to go bad and he's there right to the very end. Now if you've heard of this book there's a couple of things to say about it and one of them is that when it first came out it received huge publicity and huge praise but as time went on just think about Facebook at the moment. You put something on Facebook and people will argue about it, they'll belittle it, they'll put it down and it's just a way of life and people think that's only happened since social media but of course it, it's, it's human nature so when this bloke came out he talks about several years of the camp war campaign on the Eastern Front about moving between different towns, advancing, retreating, the horror of it all and what happens is the armchair experts come out and say that didn't happen at that town at that time. That's not right. That battalion that you say you were with was stationed elsewhere when you say that happened. What happened is this guy went through years of hell, starvation, horror beyond belief and years later with no notes and nothing but his memory, he sits down to recreate his recollection of what happened, where it happened and how it happened. What has happened recently, thank goodness, uh, the armchair experts are now changing their view to this book to the point where psychiatrists are now using this book as an example of survivor guilt, he was purging and he felt guilty. Why did he survive the horrors of the years on the Eastern Front? You have to read this to believe it. Why did he survive when so many of his friends died? Survivor guilt. It's what a lot of people that come back from Vietnam suffer from, from all conflicts. They get back and then there's a thing called survivor guilt. And obviously too, he had post-traumatic stress. There's absolutely no doubt of that. So now the time tune, tune is changing about this book. What is interesting about this book, The Forgotten Soldier by Guy Sager. Again, my pronunciations, forgive me. Sager was a, uh, the name he wrote under, his real name. He was half French. He had a German mother, French father, fought in the, joined the German army when the war, when he was 18 and the war was already underway, World War II. But his, his actual name was Guy Momino, French. Well, again, what's interesting about this book is 
The U.S. Army General Staff College record this book as recommended reading and the Commandant, the Office of the Commandant of the U.S. Marine Corps recommend this book for reading. So the book came out in 65 and it was reprinted and re has been reprinted and reprinted countless times. It didn't receive major critical review until the 1970 in the West, I should say, because remember it was originally in French. But when it was critically reviewed it, and it hit the New York book stands and was then being reviewed by major New York literary reviewers, the New York Times wrote, this is painful to get through, but it is worth the cost in horror that the reading entails. So the two things that I'd like to leave you with about this book that I cannot recommend enough. I've had this book since the 70s. This is a copy I bought in the 70s and I reread it quite regularly. It is a mind-blowing book to read. When you think about All Quiet on the Western Front, you couldn't make this book into it. There's no way you could make this book into a movie. You just simply could not do it. So the, the two things I will leave you with is that the book is, is coming towards its end with the mammal, what would you call mammal? M-E-M-E-L and my words fail me to describe that. It's going to be another video, but uh, so we'll leave it, you can see it when that video is made. But I'm going to leave you with just the last thing I'll leave you with from this book. So I'm just going to read a bit, we'll see how it turns out on the video. But what's happened is they're starving, their uniforms are worn out, they're on the run, they haven't eaten for days, they're skeletons in ragged uniforms and the Russians are hard on their heels and it is a debacle of a retreat. They finally come to a town where there are some stores, they get sent to the divisional store and when they get there, this is what happened. While we waited, we watched a crowd of men that were part of the new Volkstrom Battalion. They swarmed into a factory courtyard. When we looked more closely at these men, recently called up by the Fuhrer, our eyes opened wide with surprise. They all belonged to the last class of reserves and seemed to be an even more extreme case than the conscripts at the end of the Napole Napoleonic era. Some of these troops with Mausers on their shoulders must have been at least 65 to judge by their curved spines, bowed legs and ambident wrinkles. But the young boys were even more astonishing. For us who had saved our 18, 19 year old lives through a thousand perils, the idea of youth to us meant childhood, not adolescence which was still our current phase of life, despite our disillusionment. But now we were looking literally at children marching beside these feeble old men. The oldest boys were about 15, but there were others who could not have been more than 12. They had been hastily dressed in worn uniforms, cut for men, and were carrying guns which were often as big as they were. They, lo they looked both comic and horrifying, with their eyes filled with unease, like the eyes of children at the reopening of school. None of them could have imagined the impossible ordeal which lay ahead. Some of them were laughing and roughhousing, forgetting military discipline, which was unassimilable at their age, and to which they had been exposed for less than three weeks. We noticed some heart-wringing details of these children who were beginning the first act of their tragedy. Several of them were carrying school satchels that their mothers had packed with extra food and clothes instead of school books. A few of the boys were trading with saccharine candies which were a ration 
only allotted to children under 13. The old men marched beside these young sprouts, staring at them with incomprehension. What would be done with these troops? Where were they expected to perform? There was no answer to these questions. Were the authorities going to try to stop the invincible Red Army with them? The comprehension seemed tragic and ludicrous. Would total war devour these children? Was Germany heroic or insane? Who would ever be able to judge this absolute sacrifice? We stood in profound silence, watching and listening to the final moments of this adolescence. There was nothing else we could do. It is an incredible book. Cannot recommend it enough. If you want to see more strange and unusual and unheard of stories from Trooper Cody's channel, stay tuned for the next one. Make a comment. Click like. Till we meet again. Cheers.